Welcome back to Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. This week, you know, we kind of joke about Open Skyrim. Turns out that joke's on us, and Feral takes first place by releasing the first Vulcan title that is not in beta. Kickstarter game with a Linux demo? Be still that black organ in my chest that pumps blood through me. And Descent falls down the money hole, and it might not be able to get back up. Not to take Valve's lead as an, ex- uh, yeah, 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 as an example, uh, Atari try their hand at the Steam Machine concept, and GOG gives you some more free games if you already own them on Steam. It would be great to have a bit of a cushion if the Valve shoe ever drops. Man, Pedro, you went full Porky Pig there. It was kind of yes. brilliant. I wasn't going to say it. I loved it. I've, I've been stone, you know me. I'm joined every week by the, our, our Canadian and um, the original Brito, uh, the man who actually founded Britannia. I'm surprised Portugal didn't do that. They kicked him out. Joined every week live with Shat Realm Dynamic, helping us form that last, most special little bit known as Cocaine Voltron. Gentlemen, before we get started, we do like to see what's going on in each other's life. Organs, J Baby, you have flown back from Finlandia. Yeah, and I'm going back next week. God, I miss drugs. I really do. <laughs> uh, I, 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 also, I also tore a big old callus off my hand. That was fun. Mm. So it's all so now now I've I've I got I gotta start manicuring my hands because apparently this is a thing that weightlifters need to do after a certain amount of time, or else they're start losing chunks of hands. <laughs> Baby hands. That's the price. Pedro, what's yeah. up, man? Well, over here, uh, you may have read on the social medias that I was going for a job interview. It's basically for the exact same job, except it's a permanent position instead of being through the temporary work agency. I got it, uh, but it's still going to be like 8 to 12 weeks for that whole process to be complete. So I'm not celebrating just yet. Mm. So ma- mail all the episodes of Linux Gamecast that Pedro has been on to <laughs> yeah send them to <laughs> HR. NHS. Yeah, it's going to be brilliant. Just do that super <laughs> cut. I don't have anything exciting to report because I unfortunately Skyrimmed Mad Max. So uh, I'm assuming every if you don't know what Skyrimming a game is, that's where you get all the way to accept the very last boss in that last segment. And this really only applies to open world games. You're like, well, fuck that. I, th- th- then I'm done. Then there's nothing left. So, yeah, I have that. Uh, it took, f- I got 50 hours out of it, though, so that's pretty good. Took yeah, you, you gotta be careful, though, because when, so, sometimes, sometimes when you're talking about Skyrimming something, it means when you tuck your head, your legs find your head, and you know, you, you know, you know what? Never mind. No, 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 no. <laughs> Who's Sky and what's so special about her, Rim? Uh, uh, I think uh, one thing that we managed to shove behind our beautiful head organs every week is the horse. Oh yeah, look at look at that beautiful puckering asshole. It's the Steam Linux update. Oh shit, son. Sale. Sale. Dun, 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 dun. Hey man, horror games, booga booga. But that's not all that's on the sale. Uh, a lot of other random bullshit that you probably already own is on sale as well. To which I kind of looked at this and went, wow, I already have almost every single one of these games that's available for Linux. Oh but man. It's 2017. It's a beautiful time. Too. Look at all the Linux love that we have right here. I'm enjoying it. Um, Dying Light, currently 20 watt stinky cash, is definitely worth picking up if you have a beefy system. Because even with a beefy system, and it's not that great a performer. Check us out on Tuesdays if you want to find out more about that. Um, I did pick up Black Misa. Misa. For $7.99. I, I couldn't pass that one up. Uh, what about oh, you, yeah. Mark? I mean, I, I haven't grabbed anything yet. Uh, if crack is your thing, Darkest Dungeons is 10 bucks, so there, there's yeah. a good way to get addicted to something. Um, and I'm tyr- Tyranny dropped to 50%. I'm going to wait and see if it's going to drop to like maybe 60% off. But as you're scrolling past the game, something peaked my or caught my eye. Remember when they were talking about, oh yeah, Darksiders 2 is totally coming to Linux. We have this build and everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nothing happens. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you don't already own Salt and Sanctuary, it's currently forty percent off. It's around ten bucks or uh, eight fifteen pounds. So that is something you should probably get. 
Uh, that said, I did get myself uh, a couple of games. I went to my wish list and I said, you know what? 20 pound limit. That's about as much as I'm willing to spend. So I got uh, In Exilium, Magicka 2, Guns of Icarus, Alliance, uh, Valley, Finding Teddy, and Defender's Quest. So I never yeah, realized I that they actually put uh, ref tracks on the Steam video. I was just looking at the movies, man. Evil Dead Two for ninety nine cents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get some, you get some stuff there. I, I guess I don't. Oh, know. Old, old, old Dracula doesn't need to go out in the sun, so he can just stay inside playing video games all day. This is true. So uh, Steam hasn't done anything that could end up uh, incredibly bad, cataclysmic style in a little while. And uh, two weeks, probably t- two weeks. Yeah. Two. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, once once again, Valve takes the whole digital economy concept a little too literally and tries to implement some uh, money system. So this is there. Uh, you can now buy Steam gift cards within Steam, and then. It will dump the money directly into people's Steam wallet. Now, you cannot actually buy stuff, buy these cards using your Steam wallet, which presents an interesting uh, restriction for the card flippers and whatnot. So mm-hmm. that, that's the thing. Um, but yeah, now if you don't know what your friend wants, but he, you don't want to get him something off Steam, you can you know give him some money. Or, you know, the time-honored tradition of just going up to them and slapping their face with a stack of bills and then dropping it on their head. I mean... Mm. That is um, the way to I, do it. I, I mean, the the one the one question that popped up at first for me was like, could this theoretically be used for money laundering? And if it's steam laundering, what do we call that? Pressing, ironing, <laughs> two hour, 20, one hour dry cleaning. Um, We're definitely gonna call it something, man. But the I, I was kind of thinking about it. You know, the people who typically buy gift cards, not necessarily just steam gift cards, are the people who don't have bank accounts for whatever reason or the people who keep all their money in their mattress for whatever reason. And I, I don't see him using digitally, but uh, Pedro, there, there's an interesting little point that yeah. kind of found out. A Whoa. very interesting little point, which is, uh, see, people were trying to, after they got one of these Steam gift cards, the digital ones, they were trying to use the market, and, well, they couldn't, uh, because Valve put a little cooldown on their account saying, okay, you got a new Steam um, gift card, so now you can't use the market for three days. And Valve is, uh, they've grown fond of doing that, and I guess they kind of know that the Steam market was where all the card bots and everything else happens, so they are trying to sort of introduce a buffer to the Steam market to prevent, uh, or at least try to prevent, the card bots and the scammers and everyone else from actually trying, from actually making a profit, as it were. So uh, it's it's bad, uh, it, and it is good on Valve for actually thinking about. Oh yeah, let's not let people use wallet funds to buy these cards because at that point yes it would be laundering uh, <laughs> but it is still not going to stop the scammers and the um card well, bots here's, here's here's the thing though is that you're never going to be able to stop them as long as there is yeah. the 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 promise not not even the ability but the promise of some sort of exploitable financial system people will oh, yeah. get on board because they love People love the idea of a get-rich-quick scheme. So, mm-hmm. well, I even mean, that. I mean, when, Val, when you're Val dealing with just like the, the tiniest task. amount of the profit, and the, the, that's enough incentive. I mean, we got spammers still in 2017, man. You know, mm-hmm. fractions of pennies you might make. And apparently, they can still make money off that. I, I don't know <laughs> exactly what the clusterfuck from this is going to be, but. There's going to be Oh, one. don't worry. The Steam community will find new and interesting uh, ways like, to make this like, a popcorn-worthy like, like, thing. Like, like, I, like I said, Val- Valve has sort of sort of has this impossible task levied on them now because they're they're a legitimate marketplace now, much like a stock market or something like that. And there, there, there's speculation, there's secondary and tertiary economies that have sprung up mm-hmm. because of Steam. And now they're they're they are scrambling to outthink the literal scores, dozens, thousands of people who are trying to figure out ways to um, abuse their system. It's 
Yeah, it's it's just the, it's just a matter of sheer numbers. There are more of them than there are Valve employees. Well, then again, I mean, you get to imagine at some point it's kind of like the Valve formula. Is this screwing and taking advantage and credit card fraud? Is like, yeah, it's like how much money is it making us? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, fa- factor in all the broken laws as a business expense, and at the end of it, after all the lawsuits and whatnot, if you still turn a profit, you're good. Banks do this all the time. Hmm. It yeah. is a thing. And- Steam is the monopoly on PC, be it Windows, Mac, or Linux. They basically have every single person who likes to play video games on their PC by the balls. Um, we're, we're Steam curators, Pedro, I think. Oh, yeah. yes. Yes, yes, we well, are. Pe- I still Pe- keep Pedro that up is to a Steam curator. <laughs> I keep that up to date, believe it or not. Uh, if you see like a bit of a dry patch that a new game doesn't get recommended, that's because we've been playing a lot of shit games. Uh, that said, this uh, doesn't have anything to do with that specifically, but tangentially. So this is the Steam Curator update. Uh, they are, they you may remember a while back they introduced curators, but it had very limited functionality. So then they increased the functionality a little bit. Uh, they increased the character limit in the little blurb that you can leave for a video game. Uh, now they're actually expanding on that. They're allowing you to embed video. Very important in our case. Good on you, Valve. Um, They are allowing game developers and curators to directly interact with one another to basically give Steam keys to curators and have the, once the curation post has been made, give the developers some more feedback, some more tools to better get that feedback and hopefully do something about it. Not that many of them do, but it's there it's an option so it is uh for the regular consumer though it is they are changing the way that the steam store operates so that the you may remember if you follow the curator and you went to a games page you would see maybe like halfway down the page you would see whether or not one of the uh, curators you follow recommends it now it's actually right on the sidebar near the top so everyone will see it And they're also introducing curation to the tag cloud system that uh, Steam has now. So whenever you go to check out the tags, you can see, like, the curators, what are the most common tags or the tags associated with the games that that curator has the most of in their list. So it is, and uh, on top of that, they also have the uh, ability to sort for curators themselves, the ability to sort all the curation by categories, by tags, whatever I'm, you want to do it. I'm, so I'm, I'm just tickled at the by the prospect of one day, while I'm scrolling through Steam, being like, oh, here's a video that recommends this game, and it's the fucking Chairquisition. <laughs> yeah, man. And, hey, and, all, and, all, and all of a sudden, someone's going to be like, well, now I'm not buying this game at all. Fuck exactly. that. Exactly. <laughs> I, I want to see how quickly they, they can do some modifications to the system to make sure it's like, well, make sure these guys don't show up. Uh, yeah. you know, being able to send in, send keys to curators and all that, even though it won't really apply to us directly, is a good thing for developers. Mm-hmm. Because, holy fuck, that is like admitting you're female on Reddit. Being a game developer with people just coming out of nowhere pretending to go, ooh, hey, how are you doing? How are you doing? Can I get something? Can I get something? And they're lying through their fucking teeth about mm-hmm. who they are, what's going on. They're fucking creeps. And there's a bunch of c- creeps out there begging for keys. Mm-hmm. Oh, so, yeah. We're, 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 we're three of them. Exactly. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> but no, uh, th- this potentially is a good thing just because... With the with the death of Greenlight and whatnot, there's just so much garbage on Steam, and you have to have some way to cut through and filter all the 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 noise out so you can get some of that tasty tasty signal. Otherwise, Valve's not going to make any money at all ever because no one will want to use their product, mm-hmm. the storefront. Um, I, I I would like to see some like better integration with sort of like the external, because because basically you're you're it, it is just taking all of the um all of the things that uh, streamers and influencers normally do, and then integrating it directly into the Steam platform because they want people locked in and invested to the Steam ecosystem. So I, w- I would have liked to see something a little more externally focused, but it is a welcome change, maybe. 
we'll we'll, we'll see how uh, things actually remains to be seen. Uh, now they are already in beta. This uh, particular curator update has gone out in beta to a specific set of curators. Yeah, I like uh, how you say not... that. It's probably like four four people have it. I have no yeah, idea. it's like uh, Do- Dodger, Total we Biscuit, were not... Jim Sterling, exactly Jessica. people yeah. who kind of sort of remember that there's a curator page. Yeah, right. Because so I mean, we were Steve, not, Valve, uh, if you got we a system not, that you uh, haven't used that. or updated for two years, people tend not <laughs> to use it, and more importantly, people tend not to check it. Yeah, and I am curious to see whether or not uh, we'll be able to request multiple keys, like say three of them. I I would think that would only work if they offer four packs or something like that. Mm. Um, I, I I don't know. With that that does remain to be seen. Probably not. Yeah. Though. That's a thing. So um, Ryan C. Gordon was talking about porting some games to Linux this week, and uh, somebody at Valve <laughs> took it personally. Oh so man, to speak. Um, d- dude had some words to say, man. You know, <laughs> a lot uh, of words. G money <laughs> just G money just kind of rocked in, and he's like, uh, you know, we just don't think Linux is a big enough market. Instead, he was talking about another project. We'd re- yeah. re- read it basically. They Somebody focused on VR instead of making a Linux port, and there's not a big market for VR. Perrier, Perrier, Loup. Yeah, Pierre Loup Refait. Refait. Because he's French. Yes. Dude walks in, he's like, hey man, VR is already a bigger market. Maybe Linux users could try to actually buy in some games if they wanted people to port them. Exclamation <laughs> mark. Exclamation. Now, later on, later on, yeah, you you could be like, ah, oh, dick. All right, that's cool. Whatever. And th- this keeps going and eventually gets down to the point of same dude writes back. He's like, people tend to have strong feelings about people saying dumb stuff on Twitter. Maybe you should run for president. And that's what he's telling old Icky, Ryan G. I, 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 I'd, <laughs> I'd vote for Ryan C. Gordon for president. Yeah, man. A, grill, a, yeah. a, a grilled cheese mm-hmm. in every mouth. Who, who the may, fuck may, is this may, motherfucker? May, may, is up the wazoo. <laughs> Uh, I mean, is he just? An... Well, so there, there's there's this one thing he says that that really stands out. Let me rephrase: they do buy games, just less games overall than VR users. Yes, because primarily VR users are Windows based, and there are a lot more games that people tend to want to play on the Windows. Oh, um, and it I'm gets pretty. I'm, I'm almost certain that like the. Because we, we, we know from the Steam survey that the, the VR market isn't as big as uh, people think it is. Mm-hmm. Um, and and again, like mo- these people are still gamers. They don't just game exclusively in VR. Uh, it's, it's, a ni- it's nice if a game offers it because then they can actually justify their $1,000 purchase for their big-ass video card and Vive headset. Mm-hmm. But again... The, the fact that they buy more games than Linux users basically boils down to they're already on Windows. They already have way more selection than we do. So, of course, they will buy more games. And it gets worse because VR has been deliberately marketed at those people who are loaded. Or if they're not loaded, they're willing to spend as much uh, on a freaking face fucking toaster than they spent on their PC. And yeah, hey those man, people, hey man, somebody could have got it as a gift. Yes, but those are very few and far between. It's now, s- said by the guy, people, said by the guy with a thousand pound video card. Uh, technically, it was true, true. That, 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 that wasn't a gift. They bought and sold his ass. <laughs> oh right, right, right. My bad. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, uh, but no, uh, it is very much a an elite group. It is a very rich niche, as it were. So, yes, of course, people are going to spend more money if they already have a shit ton of money invested on that platform to start with. It's the gambler's fallacy. No, not the gambler's fallacy. It's It's sunk sunk cost fallacy is what you're like. Sunk cost fallacy. That's the one. Um, Well, I, I would kind of argue that it could also be people desperately trying to justify the purchase of that hardware by finding a VR game that's not absolute shit. Justify the fucking gimmick. Yeah. Good luck with that. Gorn. I, I, I will say 100%. Gorn justifies that gimmick so much. And I, I love a game where you can no, you you literally rip people's arms off and beat them to death with them. That's great. I love that shit. And if you want a Linux players to pay more or buy more games, do something about it. Actually promote or help 
uh, developers port their games to Linux. Do something, because so far, what we've seen are half-assed attempts. Remember the Steam machines? Those could have been great. But hey, let's uh, stop no, focusing on the past, and instead, let's focus on the past. It's the Atari box! <laughs> yeah, yeah, so... Um, WCCF look, look, at, has, look at that wood paneling, man. It's 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 chic. It's seventy chic. <laughs> that was a three D printed case that they took a picture of. But yeah, no, this is the Atari box, uh, and the creator uh, gave an interview to WCCF Tech, and he claims that the Atari box will succeed where the Steam machines have failed. Now, bold claims there, uh, <laughs> and. Okay, I get it. In well, a way, I get so, it. So, I mean, I mean the, the, the main difference here, if you read through the article, is, oh, well, people actually know Atari. Um, people, people know who Pac-Man is. People know what the Atari IPs are. So we're going to actually leverage name recognition and advertise it, which mm. is kind of the yes. critical misstep that Valve didn't take. Well, there, there's and, also that, but then again, it's Atari. Like, didn't, oh, what did they make? They made the Jaguar, um, that thing. They they they, yes. they made a bunch of games that people had to go dig out of the sand in the desert. They made a documentary. Wait, um. <laughs> but yeah, no. where, where, where you thought that one like, guy was me. Um, integrating new features into uh, well, integrating the features that the established consoles like the PS4 and the Xbox have, while providing old games and even new indie games built into a retro-styled console is something that there is very much a demand for. Just look at the NES Mini or the SNES Mini. Those I, are I, selling I feel, like I feel that one, that, that one, though, is a lot more nostalgia-driven just because there's... A lot of people grew up with um, with uh, Super Nintendo or uh, NES. And, yes, emulators are all over the place. You don't really have to look very far if you want to play these games. But just... Like the, the notion of, oh, it's like a little tiny NES I can plug in my computer. Oh, I can play uh, Mario Kart again. It has the same freaking controller. I think that that's really the main thing. Uh, every, everyone I've talked to who's gone out and bought an NES or Super NES Classic have basically sort of echoed that sentiment. With yeah. Atari, though, they're, they're trying to like, oh, well, it'll do the old Atari games like Adventure. Remember when you're mm -hmm. the fucking square? Go crawl through some dungeons. But people but. aren't usually going to be into that. that. That's a little too vintage for... The, to that the, argument, the, uh, the creator in the interview actually says uh, that the, well, he basically goes on a little tirade about how brand recognition and feelings and people's nostalgia are a driving, um, they're a driving force for, uh, well, sales. And I kind of agree, again, the NES and the SNES Mini have that, but this is Atari. And Atari, in case you don't remember, the actual Atari died in 1984 when the video games industry crashed. The Atari that we have right now is actually uh, Infogrames, um, which rebranded itself after they bought Hasbro Interactive, which is the Hasbro video games division, which owned the rights to use the Atari name in a digital market. So this is not Atari. This is just stupid what's a shell of atari but i mean this is a dumb move because they're, they're trying to hop on a bandwagon that might have one left in it nintendo might and i mean fucking might this is gonna be the one that's gonna stop this bullshit nothing against the minis though no, no, build yourself a pie though save the money yeah they might be able to get away with doing an n64 retro but as soon as you get into the cd fucking era shit with the <laughs> gamecube and all it, Fuck off! That well, you're too close to and prison. Dolphin, dolphin exists. Well, you yes. got that, but the, the nostalgia is not there. And with that nostalgia, Atari. I mean, Atari's too old for me, man. I mean, Atari was old hat shit when I was born. So yeah. I, so I don't know what really, you're really be thinking there. I, I mean, really, the their best hope is to basically sort of forward this as, oh well, this. Is, in, in addition to all these crappy Atari games that you may have played at your grandfather's house because that was like the video game system that he bought when it was relevant and he gave a shit about that. Mm -hmm. um, 
Maybe make it an indie, sort of like an indie game platform, like fo- focus on getting like your shovel knights and your uh, your um, owl boys and your whatnot on the system. The biggest problem with and that ma- is ma- that make it make it a very smooth experience, and then you might have you that might market have already something. exists, man, on the Nintendo Store, the PS4, and Steam boxes. The indie market's yep. already yeah. there. it's established, and there's, there's no guesswork on whether or not. The only thing. I'm genuinely concerned about is whether or not I can plug my Genesis controllers in it and they will still work. Once we well, get you, that you, you need, No, it's going to be the Genesis mini controllers because mm, okay, it's right. going to be those jacked up USB things that Nintendo uses. Hey man, old shit made new again. Descent underground. Uh, mm. yeah, they're, they're, they're getting off of early access. They have, they have turned off the money spigot supposedly. And then I know you have a lovely rant about this. So I'll get out of your, I'll get out of your way really quick. Um, they've decided that maintaining an early access build is a little too much work. They're taking too many bug reports. They can't focus on actually shipping the final product. And so they are delisting it. You can still play the game if you have it. Uh, you can still download it. It's not going anywhere. They're just not going to be updating it anymore. That said, they are moving over to a new service where you can follow and, you know, pay the money to continually develop um, this thing. Because it seems like their single sales aren't really keeping them afloat anymore, especially when they had that sale a couple years ago where everyone just bought Descent for a buck. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and, I mean, I, I think I think this whole delisting and moving to Brightlocker thing is very much, well, we've, we've sort of hit our limit on early access. No one's really, we're not engaging with people anymore. No one's really giving us any more money. So we need more money because we gone over budget and our scoping was really bad because project management is not for punk ass bitches i've said it time and time and again you need a manager yeah, to keep you guys on task what you said about the uh the whole bug the number of bug reports that they were getting oh so you're choosing to ignore the bug reports and instead you're just going to find another website to make money off of expect a buggy ass campaign then i don't know i mean I, I posted this in our discord earlier this week when it went down and empty kind of through it. He's like, good on them, man. Good on them. He's like, it, you know, it, it takes some gusto, some moxie to cut off that money spigot. Some, some chutzpah. And <laughs> y'all motherfuckers. Um, it, it does. And you can be like, okay, all right. And I'm down with that. Then I started reading the post, and putting two and 13 together. And I headed over to that fucking bright locker, did a little digging around there. Oh, their buddies made it. Oh, they're soliciting for more money and donations over there without Valve getting their cut. It's like, okay, that's the thing. But here's the real thing is that excuse. Because y'all motherfuckers, and I'm talking to you, developers of Descent, barely made any updates to this game in early access in the fucking first place. So don't, don't, don't come at me with the supporting it was becoming a distraction. Then why the fuck are you putting it up for them soliciting donations? Bullshit. That's bullshit, and you know it, and if it's not, it's how it's coming across. And under the guise of, well, we just want to move all of our communication over to Brightlocker. No, fuck that. You already had a community. You, you've been in early access, and yeah, it's just trying to move people community. over That's- onto some new feedback platform that, will, again, created by your friends to solicit more money just comes off sketchy as hell. And you know what, Brad? Let me tell you what. It's kind of a hard sell for a game that was supposed to be delivered in March last year. I mean, mm-hmm. you don't have a game. It's been over two years since a successful Kickstarter campaign. You don't have shit to show for it. And you're throwing, you're throwing excuses at me, man. Yeah, like, like I said, yeah. they need a project manager. It's not for punk-ass bitches. You can't let developers kind of go off on their own because as someone who has to deal with developers, I can tell you. They will just keep developing it until someone says, puts their foot down and says, hey, we actually got to release this shit. So, mm-hmm. you know, prior, prioritize the breakers. We'll fix the, the nice to have stuff later. Let's get a product out. And I've said this before and I will say it again to the people who actually pay for the games. Mm-hmm. Stop giving developers money before they finish the game. But That's Pedro, now I can donate bright coins finish. and have an interactive social community on this website that's going to fucking fail. I hate to break that to you, too. Way too late to be coming up with... Uh, and I'm kind of surprised that Fig is still a thing. And why am I really upset about this? Let me tell you, developers of Descent, because I care. That's why I fucking 
am upset because I wanted this to be a good game. Even though you were not the original team behind the original Descent, they've actually went off and started making a real Descent clone that's kind of eclipsed you in progress in a much shorter period of time. But you kind of fucked this up. And I'd rather you just own it and be like, hey, we fucked this up. And I, I just don't like spin. I just don't like spin. Maybe that's just me. I'm old fashioned like this. Old men vent hashtag. Well, uh, uh, all, all I'm hearing is that it's it's a big old tanks for nothing. Hey, man. Speaking of tanks, um, available on Mac and Linux for the low, low price of free. Yeah, Tank Force is now available. And you, too, can load it up and go, man, this looks like that old Castle Wolfenstein that was on Linux back in the 90s. I'm not joking graphically wise. And you can drive around, play a tutorial and go, hmm. All right. That's the thing. You might be put down just a bit if you are anywhere other than the EU or Asia, because that's the only two places this damn thing has servers. <laughs> you drive around. It's like BZ Take with a HD texture pack or textures. Uh, not much to it. I played the tutorial. I was like, all right, that's the thing. This, this could be fun enough. Could be simple enough. You Hell, we might actually play it in an after show sometime. Just probably not tonight. Yeah. I didn't see any DLC. That's what kind of shocked me with this. And it's an MMO. No, no, no in-game purchases either. Yeah. So I, I thought at least let, let's give it a mention. It runs on Windows 7, 8, 0, 8, 1, and 10. And apparently it runs on Linux because it just installs. So Yes. And it technically starts, but uh, you got further than Ivan because I didn't even make it to the tutorial. Uh, the main menu, I couldn't actually interact with anything. So I just alt f forward and I went to check the Steam reviews and there seems to be a general consensus of just meh going around. Yeah. So I don't think I'm missing anything. Well, I mean, if you have something that technically functions and does what it claims to do and it's completely free, it's like, yeah, all right. Yeah. It, it's yeah. there. Yeah. It could be your thing, though, man. I mean, some people might have a raging clue for tanks, for all I know. I, I mean, World of Tanks still has a bunch of active players, and that doesn't have a Linux version. Wait, does it? No, I think it's on one. No, no, no. I'm, 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 th I'm thinking of War Thunder. That, that's what I was War thinking. War Thunder, yeah. yeah. I think War Thunder yeah, does but, have a Linux version. No, yeah, that, that, that's that's why I mentioned that. Um, okay. Yeah, uh, but I mean, I'm, I was never into like the tank, tank combat genre, but I mean... It's available on Linux. That that's one up on its competitor, which is only really available for Windows and Mac. So, yeah, mm, uh, yeah. Credit, credit credit where credit is due. Okay, um, Alboy was Tiny. a pretty pretty expensive game back uh, when it released, and you know, it, uh, yeah, some the, people the, complained those... about it because they said, mm -hmm. "Hey, it's kind of hipster. It's kind of pixel, a little dated," and I think that price is a little high. Yeah, well, that's the other thing, too, is that Owlboy had, like, a good chunk of development time behind it. And it really was a labor of Several love. Several years. And so, and, and so you could justify the uh, price. Tiny Barbarian DX, on the other hand, I'm not 100% sure about that. Because the go-to price here is $32.99 Canadian. It's 10% off right now. And basically, it's like a, like a Contra Castlevania type thing where... It, well, that, that's basically what it is. It has a bunch of very positive reviews, so ostensibly it is relatively well done. Uh, but it looks like just another hipster pixel um, platformer to throw on the pile. Apparently it does have network multiplayer, though, so that is definitely A+. Plus. Uh, more games need that. Oh, look at look at those pecs. That's sexy. <laughs> See, I looked at that and I thought to myself, yeah, uh, that doesn't look owl boy good to justify 20 freaking pounds I, 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 I don't know though. Th th those pecs are those pecs are worth twenty pounds. Ooh, I, I'm I'm sure they could press twenty each. Uh, oh. That's where the sexy money's going, maybe. Uh, <laughs> okay, okay. So sex sells, I guess. Well, I was looking at this. Okay, yes, absolutely, one hundred percent agree. That price on Brad is completely recalculous. Then, yeah. of course. Going against everything we stand for here at LGC, I did a little bit of investigation as to why. Turns out it was... Th this game's been on sale and in bundles for one wet stinky cash. Okay? That, that, that's, that, that's a little extra sauce for this. Good looking game. Multiplayer and all that. Hell, maybe we would be like, yo, send us some keys. But it might be fun to play. But, turns out that they were recently put on the Nintendo Switch store. 
So to keep their prices in line with what they're charging on the fucking Switch store, they changed it on Steam because that... I understand the fucked up logic behind that, but it makes no goddamn sense. Yeah, no. Yeah, and, I, uh, I, I mean, like, are they are they charging thirty dollars on the Switch Store for this? I wouldn't. I wouldn't pay that. I'd pay maybe fifteen at most no, I, for this. I think they're doing the exact same thing that the people who release their quote unquote Android ports on Steam do, which is a free game on Android and then five dollars on Steam with the exact same microtransactions. Well, I mean, you can imagine this game being through because it looks like a very well done, competent hipster pixel with multiplayer. All right. We're not saying this game looks lazy, but Switch users are Doesn't fuck look boy good. fucking starved for games right now. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, this game used to be a lot cheaper and it looks really weird and not saying it's not worth that. I'm saying it's hard to say it's worth that when it used to be half that price. Mm-hmm. And you're only doing that because of Nintendo. And if I'm wrong about it, feel free to let us know. So, or maybe check it out on a bundle if it ever goes back to a buck. Mm, that, yeah. that, that's true. Uh, something that came out this week that uh, kind of looks like some artsy bullshit, but you know, Pedro, sometimes artsy bullshit games can be fun. Yeah, RZ bullshit games can be fun, and sometimes they can be the best thing to come out on Steam for a whole fucking week. Or at least something that doesn't look like complete ass compared to everything uh, else. You're, 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 you're talking about beat the game, right? <laughs> well, I'm talking about Air. He could be talking uh, about everything. <laughs> so, uh, Air Memories of Old, as they call it, is a little exploration-based game where you get to transform into a bird, which is basically code speak to we can be asked to design levels. So we just plotted some islands here and there, and you get to fly to them, and we get to justify a big-ass sandbox with not a whole lot of anything in it. So that aside, that is just me being jaded and me be reading too much into a game that I haven't even played. Now, I did send them an email to uh, ask for keys. Remains to be seen if they'll uh, send it to us or not. But well, it does well, look the de- like a The developer very... is called Forgotten Key, so I wouldn't hold my breath. <laughs> uh, it uh, does look like a interesting game. It's at least very... It seems to be very well done. Uh, even if it doesn't have any textures, but hey, I guess cell shading is a thing. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it kind of uh, at first sniff, it kind of reminds me of that PlayStation Three game uh, Journey, which was actually really mm-hmm. good. So I, w- I would be down for this. I like, I mean, I mean, like one of, one of the cool things about uh, Skyward Sword, one of the few redeeming things of that game was the fact that you could fly around and explore and. If you can make a like sufficiently compellingly beautiful world that actually incentivizes you to go out and look for stuff, this seems like it could have like a some decent playability. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It's 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 seventeen ninety nine about now, uh, so you can grab the soundtrack and bump that up to about twenty one. Um, I'm I'm you know I kind of hope they do send us some keys for this because well, it looks yeah, really yeah fourteen cool. ninety nine. I mean and we we can pick it up. <laughs> Once we clear out the other backlog, yeah. so sometime in 2020, I mean, 2025, 2023, somewhere in there, we'll be able to get around to it. Yeah. But for I, I every mean, journey uh, that you, for every journey that you have, you end up with a wander, mm. which was that game, the walk, the literal tree walking. Oh, yeah. God. Uh, yeah, uh, oh, now. yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I mean, like, it, it would be nice to have an artsy puzzle game along the lines of something like Papo and Yo, because that was fun. That was yeah. really good. Well, it depends yeah, on what day of the week it is, because Pedro either likes it or doesn't like it, depending. <laughs> I didn't I, like some by, by, specific by way, that, things that, about that, that game, but I very much uh, enjoyed the basis of it. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. And, and anyways, that Papa Onyo is on sale, incidentally. Uh, but anyways, yeah, uh, art, artsy, puzzly games. We don't have a lot of them, or we don't have a lot of good ones under Linux, so it'd be nice to add a good another good game to the pile. Uh, and I think that's about it for the Steam News section. Coming up next, we try and beat the miners to get our hands on some sweet, sweet video cards. And then we update our compilers because we're exciting. Oh, well, well, would you look at that? It's time for Shet Realm Appreciation time. <laughs> Shout that Realm Appreciation Hour in 20 minutes. Listen, man, normally I cut you a lot gaming. of slack, but come on. That, that, <laughs> that, 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 that was low energy, man. Yeah. yeah well, you know, you know what? It's time time to push Pedro aside. 
and focus on me, that guy that no one likes. You can check us out at LinuxGameCast.com. Click that support the shows button if you want to give money to us. We're talking about all this cool stuff that we wanted to buy and how we're not adult enough to be responsible enough in order to uh, not burn our house down. So if you want to f- cause us to burn our house down, you can you can check that out. We got Amazon affiliate links. We got a wish list uh, if you want to check that out. We got Newegg affiliate links now. So you can buy shit through that. You get all sorts of crazy stuff with the um, PayPal donato buttons and magical Bitcoin QR code thing. And if you want to have the, well, really the best way to support us is to head on over to patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast where what where, where, where are we at now? 200 and uh, 200, 108 Patreons or 106? Either, either, either way, we're, ma- we're, we're, we're making some money every week. You get a lot of cool stuff that goes along with it. You get access to our Discord. So maybe maybe if you pay up now, you can start uh, suggesting show titles to make Empty's life a little, little more sane. Um, we got a ton of we got a ton of shows uh, funded from this. We got the Tuesdays and Thursday stream. We got that weekly daily Wednesday show. All of that good stuff. We're even doing some hardware reviews. It's kind of mental, but you can check that out. Really, we're only asking for a buck, but you know, if you give us maybe two fifty, you get access to the show notes. You can even suggest stories. It's kind of nuts. It's pretty terrifying. We do need to thank some beautiful people. This is my favorite part of the show. Mm. Well, oh, all right. yeah. <laughs> I, I like favorite. it. <laughs> Frank gets a raging clue when he gets to break out his sharpie because he's a goddamn addict. He's a recovering addict, but man, you give him something that give him a buzz, man. He's all smell over that it. sharpie, smell it good. Yeah, man, he's got a little wool for a little Amazon uh, wish li- uh, list. Our, our fuck, our, our fuck buddies. Fuck wall, man. Yep. Let, let me get out of the way. Um, the wall of fuck. <laughs> Matrix Dodge. Because because we got some new people on it right there. Uh, we have Mir and Lutris dot net. Matthew Commandon. Let me get out of the way again, sir. If I can get a good look at it. Yeah, <laughs> and Mir. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Mir, Mir sent us some audio cables, some audio noodles, and uh, Strider disobeyed Ven and sent him a steam controller. Do you, do you got that handy? <laughs> I, I kind of, kind of let myself down. Yes, we we got the audio noodles. It was great. We got some audio noodles last week too. New mixer incoming, super handy, and yes, yes, yes. I fucked myself on this one. Because apparently, <laughs> putting, <laughs> this is the Areola controller. I finally have one. Because despite putting it at the very bottom of the list, saying "Don't buy this," Strider <laughs> took advantage. Ever the contrarian, Strider decided, you know what? That's the one we're going to buy him. <laughs> it's pretty cool. I mean, I, I've played around with it. I, I'm going to definitely give it a week and try to learn to love it. There, there's a big ass learning curve to it, but thank both of you equally for that. Uh, Strider, you you get an extra kudos point because you put a heart emoji on the thank you note, and that's some dark ass shit, son. So I, I can respect that. Um, did did they print the heart on the little thank you note? Well, yes. Yep. Good, good good to know. But you know, speaking of speaking of hardware that we don't really need, but we kind of want. Uh, let's 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 kick over the news segment. It's the seven. It's the ten seventy Ti. AKA miners buy this one so that other people can buy NVIDIA hardware. Mm-hmm. It is definitely a thing, man. Check it out. But you're looking at it and you're like, $499.99. You're like, oh, that sounds like a really good deal. We're talking about the EVGA GeForce 1070 Ti, FTW2 gaming, whatever, 8 gigajoules, GDDR5, um, and all that jazz. It's definitely there. Only available for pre-order, and uh, here's the thing, though. At that, that, that puts it within striking distance, like 60 wet, stinky caches away from an actual 1080. Mm-hmm. These are going to start shipping November 2nd. Now, I'm thinking possibly there's one or two things that are going down. One, um, NVIDIA has, and their partners have made a because fuck you that's why amount of these specifically for miners that i I could see because hey why not you know not a massive margin because if that's not your reason for it i don't really see why the 1080 not 1080 1070 ti exists because all you're really doing is 
kind of genuinely pissing off anybody who bought a 1070 in the last six to eight months. <laughs> and anybody who's in the market currently looking to pick up a card, 60 bucks for the 1080, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah at, I mean, at that point, the price difference between this and the 1080 makes it really hard to justify. And yeah, the moment the miners get a hold of it, it that price is going to inevitably rise. So I, I, I think what may be happening is there's there might have been like a fab issue where they tried to pump out a bunch of 1080s. And there was oh, some yeah, and these are the manufacturing <laughs> defect. They, ju they, ju they just couldn't maintain the voltage. And so they're just like, yeah, 1070 Ti, guys, you know, 60 bucks less than the 1080. Go, go. Well, I mean, do it. that's an interesting theory, but you know that's not right because it's using different type of memory. Uh, well, the GPU well, it's, can it's be the, the same because the, the memory is. Well, they they could have definitely GPU. done that with the processors. I don't know. <laughs> then, like, the option two is just NVIDIA just. Literally throwing out its EP and, and dominance in the market going, oh, there was this tiny sliver of a segment that AMD could be like, we're the best card priced under $500 in this narrow ass segment. And Not videos like <laughs> just laid it out as like, were. Yeah, this were. one, uh, the they say that the, uh, 10, uh, the 1070 Ti is going to have an MSRP of. 450 uh, between 400 and 450 bucks as we mentioned last week and that is exactly the msrp that the vega 56 was supposed to come out at of course the moment the miners got a hold of that well good luck finding one that hasn't been run to the ground for less than 600 bucks hmm. i don't know man uh if I, I'm, I'm planning on running this 980. The only reason I want another 9 series card right now is so I can do recording on a separate card with NV encode lossless because you can't do that on the 770. Mm -hmm. But outside of uh, that, uh, 980's good enough for government work at this point. Yeah, the 960 yeah. and the 980 Ti have H.265 built in. Jordan. Yeah, that 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 is definitely a thing. If you're into the uh, if you're into the H.265 and you want to do the uh, decoding, not on the CPU, which can get a little expensive, and you get some of the little bit of the artifacting. I've I've dealt with that on a couple of things I've bought from the video store. Legitimately, <laughs> I go down to Hollywood Video and buy them. They They're still got them in Canada, eh? <laughs> yes, we're we're that backwards. No, but I mean they 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 have the limit here on two browser. I don't think that's going to stop people from you know trying to get as many of them as possible to mine those ethereums and bitcoins and whatnot i i, I too am waiting like I've, I've mentioned it before I'm, I'm holding out for like the next like awesome sauce nvidia architecture because that's that's just gonna curb stomp all of this shit and i, I will feel slightly less bad for another six months until they release the new <laughs> ti version of that and then i just go well i just wasted money hmm. do, you, do you think it would make you feel unreal it might. All right, yeah. So this is this is the uh, Unreal Engine 418 uh, is released. It's chopped. It's ready to go. And of course, as is tradition, we do the old Control F Linux, Control F Vulkan. No real Vulkan improvements this time around. Yep. And the only things that pop up for the Linuxes is uh, there's a new Unreal Engine audio sauce that is enabled by default on Linux. Uh, it's still in preview on Windows. Uh, there's a new version of Clang for uh, CentOS, set based on the CentOS 7 version. And if you want to write your Unreal 4 games in Visual Studio code, because you love running that Microsoft software on your uh, on your Linux box, you can do that right now. So not not a very exciting release. There's some, uh, there's some volumetric lighting stuff, volumetric fog, uh, skylights, multi-bounce, uh, Apple support, all all stuff that you really, really don't care about. Apparently, they added Steam VR support on Mac for, I don't know, the the five thousand dollar Macintosh that can actually run VR. In addition <laughs> the one, to the, yes. in, in Holy addition hell. to like the eight hundred dollar. How, how, how many headset. USB C dongles do you have to have for? <laughs> you have to have. Let's see. Uh, two, you, three you need to have dongles off dongles, man. That's Yo what dog, I'm saying. Man. You like dongles. That's yeah. definitely yeah. a new uh, dog amount. Uh, one, one other cool feature they added is um, if you are if you have a localized game, you can dynamically switch between localizations while you're in the editor, which is pretty neat. 
button. Yeah. And if you are one of those people that likes to use uh, Visual Studio Code on Linux, you will still need to have Monocomplete installed in order to use the debug features. If you're one of those people. <laughs> yeah. Pretty cool. All but, right. From one but, engine uh, to another, that's not yeah. quite as sharp. No, uh, mon mono is uh, is a big thing this time around. So uh, this is from Godot. It's uh, our favorite open source game engine. It's very high quality. Um, it's, it's the it's the guts behind Brick Simulator. So um, <laughs> Miguel de Caza um, reached out to uh, was was in contact with the Godot folks um, because they wanted to implement a mono C sharp scripting language in Godot. Simply because this is how you this is how you snipe Unity devs. They're all writing in C-sharp, so, oh, hey, you can don't have to learn a new language. You don't have to worry about performance C++, blah, blah, blah. blah. Come, come and use our tools. Uh, so that is finally uh, in place. Uh, you can use uh, C-sharp 7.0, mono 5.2, if you want to use that sauce. Um, the rest of the article is just basically explaining how to set this up. Um, there, there, there's going to be an export for exporting uh, games using C-sharp eventually. Um, they're still talking about, um, Android support, iPhone support and WebAssembly support. Currently they're going to be focusing their attention on getting Android up and running. There's some debugging news and that's about it from the Godot thing. So Pedro, there seems to be a significant bee in your bonnet about this mono <laughs> stuff. No, let me live in my conspiracy theory fuel life. Uh, uh, get, 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 pre get prepared for the spiciest of hot takes guys. Mm -hmm. Spicy. So, so spicy. Uh, part of the article says that they uh, got a $24,000 donation from Microsoft when they said, oh, God, we want to use C Sharp. And Microsoft went, oh, shit, someone wants to actually use C Sharp. There you go. Have some money to go with that. Uh, but yeah, no. Um, you may remember last week or the week before, we talked about how Godot did not want to introduce Vulkan at all. So then they get a $24,000 donation from Microsoft in just a couple of weeks. So it's like, is that why you don't want to support Vulkan? Would it piss off the Microsoft benefactors and maybe end any and all future possible future donations? Are, are you trying to claim no, that no. C Sharp is turning frogs gay? <laughs> No, 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 no. I, 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 I uh, mean, it is, but it doesn't have to do with any Vulcanic conspiracy. No, 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 no. Uh, is this Godot's way of saying that we can expect DirectX 12 to happen soon? Uh, no. No. Damn it. No. <laughs> Let me live in my uh, conspiracy uh, theory field. Well, 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 welcome back. We're, we're, we're back from the <laughs> fancy world in which Pedro's hot takes <laughs> exist. <laughs> the fact remains that they've, they've given good reasons why they're not supporting Vulcan at this moment. They want to maintain the highest level of hardware compatibility that they possibly can. Vulcan, Let me live in my great, delusions, it, Jordan. <laughs> no. Fuck you. You got to live in the real world with the rest of us. <laughs> That's where what it's I'm shitty saying, man. And everyone wants to die. So, yeah, as as I as I was saying, though, they said that they have said before that they are not opposed to getting a, a Vulcan renderer going, but they have higher priority things on their slate. It's uh, to me, I mean, hundred percent. It's twenty four grand. Microsoft, they don't even notice that. that uh, that's nothing, and it really does seem. Hey, let's buy some goodwill, you know, donation because Microsoft, you know, they're doing the whole. Open source oh. is good now, guys. Right, right. All the all that shit we you know, embrace. Decade and a half that we spent, you know, blowing that shit up. But nah, not us. Not us. We love it. We we love the Linux and open source stuff. So keep doing that. And really, I think like the reason Godo Vulcan be damned. It's not really a three D engine, man. It's not built for it. I'm not saying it can't do it, but you know, and, technically, uh, but, but, you, you can edit movies in Blender. Doesn't mean it's meant for it, but so. Yeah. Uh, you can make him the, the, the 3D enhancements is, are is what uh, Ghetto 3.0 is about, ironically. Mm -hmm. So uh, so uh, ho hopefully we'll see some uh, better 3D content coming out of Ghetto in the near future. But who doesn't love free games? Or rather, games you've already paid for that you can move between services. 
Yeah, so uh, you may remember a while back, Godot decided to introduce a little thing they called, uh, not Godot, fuck. Uh, if you, if you say Connect. it three times, I'll give you the bite size Snickers. <laughs> Damn uh, it, so I want that Gok Snickers. Connect is how you can get Steam games that you have in your Steam library, and you can get them for free on your GOG library. And... Well, uh, we've seen every now and again, they like to drop, uh, here's a few games, here's another bunch. But this time around, they have uh, quite a lot. And um, I know Ven and Jordan already uh, redeemed their free ones. For me specifically, it was $215.27 worth of 11 games that I got from my Steam library to the GOG list. Uh, so, yeah. Go to gog.com forward slash connect and uh, make sure to update the um, update the account link because if you bought a couple of games over the past couple of weeks, it still hasn't updated to the latest one. So you may want to trigger that just to make sure you get all the games because there are a few. There are like uh, 20 Linux games if you own them all, that is. One of the good things about God Connect is, you know, with your Steam, you get a license, man, that, that can be revoked because fuck you. Yep. God, I mean, unless it goes under, you can say about their love for Linux, which is lacking, in my opinion. Not existent. Th these are copies you can just download. Don't have to worry about yep. it. It's thing. I ended up getting seven super spooky games or whatever. Um, I, I I got I got six at 123 bucks. Okay. So spoopy though. I got I got I got the new amnesias and the somas. Um, yeah. I got also have I got hand of fate and, and a couple hand of fate, which I wouldn't really qualify as spoopy. G gambling addictions are very spoopy, Pedro. <laughs> they're, 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 they are spoopy and profitable to the wrong sorts of people. <laughs> all right all right okay <laughs> but that's the thing get out there and go do it even if you haven't maybe you're listening to this show like five years from now what the hell's wrong with you it should still be available go connect your accounts get your games i mean it's free yeah. so yep uh we have a couple of vulcan titles on linux right now we have ballistic mm -hmm. overkill which is using unity's it's a beta option which is kind of a weird game to do because it performs OpenGL crazy good. Mm -hmm. Good performance. Yeah. Can't really tell the difference. Then we've seen big improvements from Mad Max using Vulcan Beta. Well, moderate improvements. Okay, let me rephrase that. Let me indoors. rephrase that on mm -hmm. AMD CPUs. <laughs> so massive improvements. <laughs> indoors. Outdoors, there was a bunch of herky jerk for a while there. Sorted. And uh, not so much with Hitman. That was never supposed to be public. And we've yeah. seen the Masters, the Croatian psychopaths, with Sirius Sam BFE, Sirius Sam 1, Sirius Sam 1 point, whatever the hell it is. And it's not gonna Talos Principle, everyone's favorite benchmark. Yeah. <laughs> the thing all of these have in common is they're all in beta. Every single one of them. No one's came out well, and be like, oh, there's no well to it, motherfucker. I checked. No, the Talos principle, if you are just using the stable version, the Vulcan render is there. It's just what, when you switch to it, it claims that it's still in beta. <laughs> yeah, when the screen well, uh, says I'm, I'm, I'm render curious, Vulcan beta. Yeah, it's probably still in beta. Just wild guess. Um, I'm 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 curious because um, none of us, well, empty can comment on this. Is um, for VR the Talos VR is Vulcan go go by default? Uh, we don't we don't know. We don't have a copy of that. I, game I think it is Vulcan because I all the VR stuff on um, Linux no, is Vulcan has to be doesn't have to be but yeah, so, kind of has to be. So uh, so the so the I, I would say Talos VR sort of counts. Mm. Yeah, I, 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 I'd give you that one on a technicality if you gave me a reach around first. <laughs> I, I mean, you, you, well, you still owe me that chicken, those chicken wings. So let, let's That's talk. What but I'm anyways, saying. the whole point of but, this. But, but anyways, it's getting a little racist. That was the whole point of this conversation is to get into this story. It's called lead in. Yeah. I, I, I know. Okay, go for it. All right, there's a there's a racing game F1 2017 for Formula One. It is going to be releasing. 
with the Vulcans from Feral. Hopefully they've learned their lesson. Uh, they can get the game to start rendering on the correct GPU, as Ven has uh, been sweating through. And, yeah, I don't give a shit about F1 racing games, so I have no strong feelings on this one way or the other. Other than, yay, let's see how let's see how good uh, Feral has gotten their Vulcan implementation. If they're well, paying, if they're getting their money's worth with that molten core, whatever the hell it is. It's definitely going to be one of those things, because if they've automated the system, how well that's going to work out. There might be a Vulcan button, a menu option in the menus, after I've talked with uh, their well, one of their Vulcan people. At Feral, I'm like, yo, and he's like, yeah, we, we might be adding that switch in, because, like, we didn't think that, would, and, and fuck me, all right, apparently that does happen if you have two video cards with the Vulcan. So, uh, Pedro, Which is good, uh, to uh, be honest, it is good that Vulcan is actually, uh, I guess, the whole Mad Max not starting for you was kind of a nasty side effect, but Vulcan is now recognizing multiple video cards, and that's good. Well... Yeah. That's good. That's good. Um, F1, not my bag. We're going to play it. Uh, maybe it'll be the F1 game. It's like, oh, shit, now I get it. And I'll be out uh, buying a racing Hopefully, wheel, which will be maybe. more entertaining because I, I have a tempered glass top desk. So you don't know about the excitement that that could actually bring us. Looking forward to the benchmark mode. We'll be benchmarking the hell out of that. So stay oh, yeah. tuned. Uh, what do we have up next? Uh, Baby. The insane, insane people at OpenMW. That's who we have next. We we always said that uh, don't let one thing happen because just disappear. (laughs) The show doesn't go on for like a month at a time. What's going on? Where's everyone at? We've lost all three of you to what? Dun, dun, dun. Bringing open source to Skyrim. That's right. They're going to do it. The creators of Open Moral Win. They basically got it completely functional. Not Skyrim, but Morrowind. It's up and running. They're like, hey, let's fuck with Linux Gamecast. And we're going to start work on basically the same engine once it used for Fallout and everything else, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Oblivion, Fallout. It's all just iterations on the same old engine. So once they get the Morrowind base down, they can start looking at implementing it for Oblivion and Fallout 3 and New Vegas and Skyrim. And it's a lovely pipe dream, I'm going to say. It, it, it's a lovely it's a lovely um, idea. And I'm sure they can do it in about 50 years, given their current rate of progress. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, I mean, yeah, it, it, would be, it would be very, very nice if we got the full rewrite that's compatible with all the Bethesda games, because Bethesda sure as hell isn't going to support oh, yeah. Linux. No, I mean, I absolutely don't think you would ever oh, we'll say that from Bethesda. Uh, but a couple of things. I think they've learned a lot doing Open Moral Win. Mm-hmm. So Open Moral Win took a long time, but they were learning as they went. Well, they were learning at first with uh, Ogre, and then they changed to Open Scene Graph. So assuming they don't need to change engines at any further point in time, mm-hmm. maybe the timetable could be a bit shorter. Yeah, I and, 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 and of course, hashtag Vulcan Skyrim. Okay, you want, yes. you, uh, you want to put like a, like five quid on it this time next year? We'll have something at least playable. I, 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 would, I would say maybe for Oblivion. is a bit of a stretch. <laughs> yeah. Okay, maybe, maybe, launch maybe, maybe it will launch for Oblivion. Maybe okay, yeah, maybe Fallout. get the menu to Oblivion or and maybe Fallout 3 since it's basically the same version of the engine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, I think that's the thing. It, 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 it's within the realm of possibility for sure. All right. That's something I was really excited about. Uh, one thing I'm not excited about is JRPGs. <laughs> oh, but you see, Ben, it's it's a tactical grid-based turn RP, turn-based turn RPG, which is my crack, <laughs> my, my, my particular weakness. Yeah, uh, there's a, and yeah, it's a Kickstarter, and they got a Linux demo. I haven't checked that out yet for good reason, because otherwise I might actually be tempted to give them money. They got 40 hours to go. It doesn't quite look like they're going to make their $40,000 goal. But this is this is a uh, this is Fel Seal Arbiter's Mark. It is uh, basically a Final Fantasy Tactics Tactics Ogre type game that uh, they're 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 trying to get out. Uh, par- apparently, there are a bunch of people who um, who have worked on these sorts of games who are going to be on this project if it gets funded. So 
I mean, I mean the ma- the main reason we're giving this shout out is because they provided a demo, and I, the, I, let's be real, the art looks super gorgeous. I would love for this to actually become a game, but it's Kickstarter. If they make, if even if they hit the forty thousand dollar mark, they're gonna go in Steam early access. They're gonna go to Bright Spot or Bright <laughs> Shit or whatever. Um, they're they're gonna open up another campaign on Indiegogo because they need the extra money. We we we've all seen this song and dance before. Let's. Yeah, it's uh, you. You'll be lucky if you back this Kickstarter. You'll be lucky if you see a finished game before, let's say, the three-year mark. Like three years after this Kickstarter ends, maybe you'll have a finished game. Most likely, it will still be in early access. <laughs> which, which, which is super unfortunate because this looks really good. I, I really sort of want this. It it, it 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 hurt it hurts my it hurts my kidney organs that we're it probably not. It does gonna very see much this. invoke the old um, Final Fantasy Tactics uh, art style, which mm-hmm. I played a lot of on my PSP back in the day. So yeah, no, I would totally be down for this, but I'm not giving Kickstarter any more money for video games nowadays because I've been burned. Well, I mean, if you haven't been burnt to a crisp just yet, you can reserve your potential. Digital copy for twenty five wet sneaky caches. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's going to be a lot of you needing to reserve your copy if this thing is it even going to complete. But I mean, we we have distance, even though they'll never leave early access. Uh, <laughs> no, they, they they too are going to bright whatever the fuck. All right, We're, everything's just going to jump over there after Steam. Yep. Steam finally gets around to copying one of our last ideas. Is you only get one year on early access. <laughs> Oh, yeah. oh, I, I I just want to cover that week. Is and everyone who's in early access Popcorn. has you, you got to get off in six months. Oh, that'd be lovely. That'd be so. Oh good. yeah, the the just the 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 literal shit hitting the fan. Oh, developers but, finishing games. You mean? Yeah, like, like I said, shit hitting fans. <laughs> ah, it's it's layered, right? All right, the final story of the evening is. From Mirror, the Linux Master Race snaps, snaps the future. Yep. Yeah, this is from Linux Master Race. So the notes, to, the links to all this stuff is in our show notes. You should check that out. But it seems that the pirates have got on the plat pack sauce. And what they're doing now is they are packaging pirated games up with the wines in a flat pack. So if you're a Linux gamer, you can download it and run it and have and a re- quote unquote reasonable experience playing your pirated ill gotten games and getting so, viruses uh, so, on your uh, linux box that's now, how you get now, viruses here, 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 here's the interesting thing the pirates have basically stolen virtual programming's model which i love it tickles <laughs> me so much it's so good also i wonder if uh, pirate strider is going to start cruising the pirate bay to try and grab some of these flat packs for the lutris Oh, kids. I honestly, I don't know. Uh, I saw, I saw this come up, and I'm like, oh, that's a Windows game that works on Linux, so it comes with wine inside a flat pack. This is how you get people, uh, Linux people, to install spyware, a worm, really any kind of malware that you could possibly have that you want to install on a Linux box. This is how you get the random people on the internet to do it. Put it on the pirate bay, let them down. Well, I, I, I mean, if you're if you're running your flat pack says root, you deserve it. Let's be real. <laughs> well, so. you also got to look at this, the type of people who say, man, I'm running Linux. I'm going to try to pirate some. Hey, look, I found games for Linux on the pirate bay. And it says, please mm-hmm. enter root password. Like, OK, that sounds right. I got to do that on my Windows box, too. So, hey, don't fucking pirate games, kids. All right, we don't need to see this shit on Linux. We don't. No, don't. we really don't. No. And but there, there's, but, there's enough of that misconception. You know, already. piracy. If it was pornography, I don't know how this wins. Maybe Flatpak just won. <laughs> Flatpaks are going to be the dominant. Um, well, yeah, uh, piracy is using Flatpak, so it wins. Um, but like, like I said, though, this 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 is one hundred percent the virtual programming model. We're 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 on to you, VP. We see what you're doing, trying to kill Linux gaming. No man, Steam's doing a good enough job of that by itself. Hey oh. Don't need no help. Take us out. All right, coming up next, uh, we put our brain in a jar and go fly around in a van with a cranky old lady and a sentient monkey. We're throwing chairs at Observer. <laughs> Uh, 
All right. Well, in the not too distant future, next Sunday AD, there were three schmucks reviewing Linux games and throwing chairs at them. This is Observer. Um, it's developed by Bloober Team SA. It's been published by Aspire. It's on the Unreal Engine 4, so it joins the illustrious ranks of games using UE4 under Linux. What is it? Observer is a cyberpunk horror game from Bloober Team, the creators of Layers of Fear. Discover a dark cyberpunk world beset by plagues, war, and squalor. Play as a new front line of neuropolis as you hack to the jagged mines of the insane. <laughs> Aspire did send us some keys from this. Uh, so if you don't know what the chair acquisition is, this is where we get some, we get around, we play a, some video game, we talk about it, we give it a little QA that maybe their original developers uh, didn't really think to do, which clearly, and you'll see later that that's kind of important. Uh, we got our chair acquisition. One chair means that it's garbage. Two chairs means it's meh. Three chairs means it's pretty good. And four chairs means that I really miss the pink, like, YOLO chairs. <laughs> and we got our categories of doom, make with, mix with the working shiny sounds, controls, and fun. So let's kick this off. I know we we all had some issues getting this game up and running. So, Ben, you, you, you took the first dive. So why don't you run us through your little... Sure, what are you talking about? This game runs fantastic. This, game, this game's great. It runs on every... It runs on my i3 integrated at uh, uh, 1080p, 100 frames a second, bro. Uh, people, stop that, that, doing... That, that, that's amazing. How, how'd you do that? Eat a bag of dicks, people. I mean, quit white knighting this shit. You're hurting Linux. I know you think you're helping. I've just... I, I've seen this since... the re, I, I've been seeing it for years, but this... Get some special attention for some reason with people. It runs great. It's like, what's your hardware? It's like, well, maybe it has a couple of performance. It's got a lot of performance issues, Brad. That's just the tip of the fucking snowbird. On the 1700, clock at 3.6 with the 980. Yeah, this game's problems has fucking problems, man. Um, the only way I can play it. I have a UHD monitor, 3840 by 2160. The only way I can play it is in a little 1080p window. It's a known problem. Now, like a responsible person, I didn't go reing all over the fucking Steam forums, which nobody checks that. You go to Aspire, they got a support ticket system. You fill it out, which it did, provide the information, get in contact with somebody, talk them, talk your way to the person you need to, and they write back, uh, you know, they are... A to quote, we are able to replicate this issue. It has been bugged and will be added to the fix list. Sorry, can't provide you with an immediate solution. What is the issue? It can't go to 1080p full screen. It can only do 3840. Even if you set it on 1080p, it goes 3840. 3840 in this game runs like bricked ass. Um, yeah, like 20, 23, 30 frames a second at most. And especially when you go into like the brain dippy parts, it'll drop to like literally eight frames a second. Mm. I, I, I was getting two at one point. Yeah, I was averaging like 14 just out, out of curiosity playing with it. Um, overlay doesn't work. These are standard. Uh, here's my first uh, UE. This is not the first UE4 title. These are things that I've seen before with other games that have come to Linux on Unreal Engine 4. This is Growing Pains. Overlay can't take screenshots. That's the thing. Uh, at 1080 with a 980, uh, I'm going to be real. You know, 1080p, for the most part, it's able to hold 60. I mean, I, I it's like with, with some dips into the 50s. It is using 89, 90% of the 980 GPU usage. That's a thing. On the 1700 clocked, again, 3.6, you could get doesn't even fucking register between the 16 threads. It's like there might be a game running in there somewhere. It, it's not doing anything. And it does seem, I, I don't have any confirmation on this, I need to ask, that Aspire didn't port this. They only published it. I feel it kind of shows. Uh, with the game itself, it's stuck me to the floor and forced me to close it and open it up twice this is a little bit of an issue since it implemented an autosave feature, so it's kind of luck of the draw where you're going to get fucked or not. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that, that's, I, I never, I never ran into that, but I, I had, I had a very similar issue with you. I had to, I, I played through a bunch of the game in at UHD with like the shit performance, and then I eventually switched it down to windowed mode, and it was, yeah, it was, it was hovering around like forty eight to sixty three frames a second, but it's, it's not consistent either. No, um, 
I, I, I agree with you, though. I, this, I mean, as far as shown that they know their way around all export, I think this was just the click export and away you go uh, UE4 equivalents. And there's a, yeah. an, an issue on top of the performance because even at 1080p, since I only have the two 1080p monitors, full screen 1080p, the performance is ass. Uh, but outside of that, there's also the issue that every now and again, the game seems to have issues keeping the mouse cursor contained in the actual game. Um, ever, uh, I noticed a couple of times, some of which actually happened while recording the video that you're watching right now, uh, which sort of forced me to go back into the game and click on it, make sure that it didn't escape the window anymore. Even though you, it was you, you, you did the uh, the drift thing where you just kind of let go of the mouse and then it goes. Ooh, yeah, and yeah, it, it absolutely does that. And yeah, no, it has issues. And I'm pretty sure Aspire wasn't involved with the port at all. Kind of sucks. A little bit irritating. But Jordan, you're on uh, Skylake Gen 2, right? Yeah. Uh, ge- well, ge- first gen Skylake. Mm. Um, yeah, I'm on the 6700K running Fedora 26 with uh, the GTX 980. And yeah, this thing runs like ass. I'm I'm not particularly pleased with the performance of it. Uh, it does launch and it does run. I did I'm not I'm not sure if this was an issue or not uh, because it I couldn't reproduce it, but I had to disable the C I had to switch Steam runtime prefer host libraries to get the game to launch initially. Afterwards, I didn't have to do that, so it may, there may be some initialization bug or something. Yeah, could, or maybe I'm just really stupid, but I'm going to give it two chairs for Mix. Yeah, we, we gave it a two chairs yeah, all two. the way down with that. Um, I will say yeah. this to Aspire's credit with the way they're handling issues. Uh, I've been perusing the Steam forum scene because you guys out there are wicked smart. A lot smarter than I am most of the time. Wait, 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 wicked smart. Wicked and if somebody's come come up with a fix, I mean, this game actively ignores if you change your INI files. Because mm. it's an Unreal Engine game. You're like, oh, okay, I know how to play this game. It was no, first thing I did. <laughs> it, it, it completely just ignores all that. But I was reading, and a lot of people said, if you submit a ticket, which they had, saying this was an issue, and I'm bringing this up because, you know, Jordan, you run Fedora, mm. is with an unsupported operating system, unless it's a 1604, 1704 Steam OS 2.0, they politely tell you to eat a bag of dicks Mm because it's not a supported uh, issue uh, operating system. So Yeah, but these these seems to be issues across the board, though, whether you're on Ubuntu or Fedora or whatever. So we're going to give that a solid two chairs, but you're looking at video if you're watching the video version. To describe it, you, what, basically, you're in an apartment, a really good-looking fucking apartment. Apartment, because well, oh, yeah, very it, it, it looks like the it looks like the Unreal Engine four apartment tech demo, and 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 that's the thing. Like this is UE four, so you get all the nice UE four textures, the lighting, all that stuff. Um, though, Ven, Ven, you you made a really good comparison with like the like the Soma visualization, like oh, I'm going crazy effects. Looks mm-hmm. like a busted video card. It, I, like, the very beginnings of. We'll talk more about that in the mechanics section, the fun section is, but yeah, your digital vision starts glitching out when it first starts glitching out. Holy fuck all. It looks like either an overclocked overheating GPU Mm -hmm. or one that's about to go tits up on you. Mm. It's part of the game. I was playing around with overclocking earlier this week. So needless to say, I went back and double checked. That's the, that's the real survival horror, right? It's like, that, shit, did hardware survive this game? Scared me more than this fucking game did. But, um, yeah, if you don't take your drugs, shit gets blurry in this game. Uh, the yeah. building, basically where you're going to be most of the time, or in the three hours that I've gotten into it, incredibly detailed. I mean, even things that you would just walk past, if you stop... Bend down, take a look, look. I mean, it's like, holy shit, tons of work. It's really fucking gorgeous, man. I yeah, mean, and you, 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 can, you can interrogate, like, so much. There's, like, doors and, like... The, the, the one thing that kind of threw me off, though, was despite how, ev- how good everything looks when you're going to, like, the doorbell, like, door camera thing, those look like crap. Like, the actual video on that screen. Yep. That was intentional, though. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I, I understand that, but it, it just seems a little out of place. It was a stylistic, I mean, even when you start off in your car, you notice everything's shaped like a CRT monitor. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. guess they were trying to go for the whole uh, Blade Runner aesthetic. It, it, Oh, I'm surprised Blade Runner they ain't going to sue somebody. I mean, totally. well, they, I mean, they, they got Rutger Hauer, right? That That's the other thing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but so, I, I I mean, like, he he's he's a little monotone in this. What what I find kind of interesting is little. both this and DSX also take place in uh, in Poland. So what is it with Poland and the cyberpunk apocalypse? Are they, are they trying to tell us something? They, they, they just got a big old clue for it. <laughs> Mm. I guess, but yeah, uh, you mentioned Rutger Hauer. He does really have the one tone throughout the whole thing. And uh, you can tell by the audio quality that he kind of phoned his lines in and it makes the dialogue sound even more disjointed than I guess they intended. But this is a very good sounding game, almost uh, assaultingly so at certain points, especially when you... Um, do the observer thing and actually hack into one of the minds of one of the people you're interrogating you if you're playing with a headset you will get a ear pussy assault when it comes yeah, to our, our, our rip headphone users yeah no uh, you will know exactly what i mean but that's good in a way and the visuals uh it's actually one of the things i really liked about this game was just how much they managed to cram into those observer sequences, which, okay, let's face it, the human characters in this game all look like they were slapped so hard down the realism slope that they landed face down um, or face first into the end Kenny Valley. But considering that this, uh, the general undertone of this game is that everyone has like cybernetic implants and everyone's got like bionic limbs or whatever i'm willing to excuse it and i'm willing to excuse a great deal many things about this game but more on that later um here specifically the visuals they look very good and it's one of the it, things it's, that it's, makes it's... me they make me want to keep playing this game because whenever you go into one of those observer sequences you go oh oh they're actually doing that neat and you kind of want to see what else, what other kind of shit they, they cram into those sequences because it's awesome. There's just so much stuff happening. Yeah, at any one I, point. I, I, I will. I will say they they do they do a really good job of nailing the ambiance, like with with, with the atmospheric sounds and like the really unnervy type visuals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, they they they, they manage to maintain a really good sense of tension throughout the entire game, which is something that a lot of horror games fail to do a lot of the time either because of like ridiculousness or just because it's not fundamentally scary well we'll, we'll, we'll get a little bit more to the horror bits in the fun section but I, I i can definitely say that they uh they do have they do maintain a really good atmosphere in this game it is sufficiently creepy throughout the entire it is i mean it really game. hits you kind of early too like the first time you go in to like the maintenance area in that room yeah well that motherfucker and the positional audio it's like, whoa, all right, all right. Oh, or, all right. Or, or, or when the uh, the superintendent sneaks up on you when, when you're oh, like, oh, yeah, that them. was yeah. a genuine jump scare for me. <laughs> yeah, it, got, it, it, it got like a 20% jump scare because I was already at the point of going, where's it at? Where's it? I, I know it's coming. I know it's coming. And unfortunately, I mean, a lot of this does result, uh, revolve around the game audio to the point where if you take off your headsets, you're just like, it's a fuck around simulator. Yeah, it's pretty. It's fucking gorgeous. That's why I gave it four chairs. Yeah, yeah, no, I, 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 gave, I gave it three stuff. just because um, I, I, I like the, it. It's it's good. It's it's really good. It's it's a lot. It's a cut above what we've been getting so far. But I I don't really see it's it's not eliciting like a puking rainbows reaction out of me. So. All right. So I, let's get into controls. What do you guys think about it? I mean, I, I started playing around with Waz. I, I fucked around with the uh, Steam controller a little bit. It, it works. Uh, the the one the one thing I will mention though is they do like the frictional gesticulation thing, mm -hmm. um, and it it's not quite a hundred percent implemented properly. It it'll stick on some ports points, 
ports. Yeah. Some sometimes <laughs> sometimes it's unclear which direction you need to push stuff in, and sometimes things are locked and they just won't, and it, the game just won't tell you. Yeah. No. It is, uh, and it's not just that. It's also the fact that with the frame rate, or frame rate issues, and I've noticed this with a couple of games. Uh, the mouse movement seems to be tied to the frame rate. So when the frame rate starts jumping around, the mouse movement gets all fucky and the acceleration, you can't turn it off. That's kind of a stickler for me. Uh, the acceleration just fucks itself and it's either stupidly slow or really, really fast. And that, well, that and the mouse escaping from the confines of the window can basically just cans the whole four chairs concept for me anyway. Uh, at that point, but yeah, it, uh, I guess it would be really hard to fuck up the controls when you have a game with like 11, uh, keys that you need to press at any point in time. I can basically play this whole game on my mouse. You basically can, but I mean, then again, I'm more about this in the fun segment. I mean, it's a glorified interactive visual novel. Well done. Yeah. Uh, with me, with most things, I reach over and poke the X clone controller, which is a habit of anybody who's been a Linux gamer for a long time, because for a long time there, there, there was like a 3% chance of that actually moving anything on the screen. So I, you know, I poked the hat controller. It moved. I was like, Ooh, bonus. So I picked up the X clone controller, and that's perfectly fine to play with because the game's very slow paced, except when it's not, then <laughs> then things get a little fucky, admittedly. But uh, everything was perfectly mapped. Uh, the prompts matched up. Didn't have a problem with that. Uh, Strider uh, picked up a Steam controller off of our wish list, and I, I tried, it worked with it. Uh, didn't have any issues except for the right areola was a little too sensitive, giggity. But I, I didn't feel like too new. This is something I'd play with later, but no, nothing was wrong with it. I didn't actually try to play this with keyboard and gerbil. To me, this game, just from the get-go, struck me as something to just sit back it's, and kind of experience with the occasional requirement to boop it with a stick every now and then. I, I mean, it's either or. Like, the... Yeah, games like these don't really care if you're using a controller or a keyboard and mouse. It really just yeah. boils down to personal preference. Um, I'm going to give it three chairs on the control just because the, the draggy stuff is not 100%. Hmm. Yeah, and three chairs for me too because, well, the mouse acceleration and the mouse cursor escaping the window and it, no, it's just not perfect. Right, so four, three. With the control, how is that? Three. I, I I think someone fat fingered someone i.e. me fat fingered to backspace. Okay, three. Yeah. so we definitely <laughs> got three on that. Now, finally, we got a little bit of subjective. This is where we kind of give you our mm -hmm. opinion because it's the chair mm -hmm. QA position. The whole point of this is for the game to hopefully score a minimum of two chairs, just to let you know that it does in fact work for three different people on three different systems using mm -hmm. all types of weird hardware. But this is the end where we can say, did we like it or not? So you can choose to ignore this, and that's probably for everyone's betterment. Last mm. week, when so, Aspire said that this game was coming to Linux, and by, by the creators of Layers of Fear, I said, oh shit, Door Simulator 2019. <laughs> uh, because that if you played Layers of Fear, I don't care. Even if you don't like me, you're going to have to go, yeah, there's a lot of fucking doors in that game. It's like a game mechanic or some shit. Yep. Called it. Lots of doors. There, there's a door segment in this game where it's just door after door after. It's like, yeah, these same guys. Uh, Jordan, did did you, I kind of felt like I got robbed on a lot of the immersion having to play this in a fucking window. Oh, definitely. Like even even like chugging through at full screen. Like when when. All you can see is like the game's contents. Then, yeah, you uh, the 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 creep and the ambience factor really gets jacked up. Going going to windowed mode, it's like yeah, this runs well, but I can I can see like dark side on my background or mm -hmm. some YouTube video I have in the background. It's and it, you you kind of lose some of it. 
And boy, basically, this boils down to it's a walking simulator with a couple of puzzles and some scavenger hunting thrown about. Because you got like the three mode, you got like the three, four, actually four vision modes. You got regular mode, night vision, uh, digital mode, and uh, semen detector mode. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and blacklight mode. I mean, yeah, blacklight mode, semen detector. Yeah, and you you basically try and gather all the clues, and you have a little mission thing, and it'll update whenever you uh, complete all when you ever you complete the goal in the room, so you know you can you know move on. From point A to point B, as you go and try to solve this murder case of all these random people dropping dead in this apartment complex that is horribly dilapidated. Oh, I got to ask both of you something. Okay, you know, when you first get started off and you see, you know, you're in the Explody Dude's apartment, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, then, then you got to do your first hacking and it only gets that one digit, right? Yep. Yep. Did, did you guys both have the same, it's like, wait a minute, I saw four digits on a key card. Yeah. And I, I kind of like I liked how the game kind of comes back at you and says, "Oh, you didn't think it you was going to be that." You already saw that happening in the video. That if you're watching the video version, you already saw that. But yeah, no, yeah, I tried to. I, like, I, 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 didn't, I didn't catch that number, and so I kind of skipped that part. And that's the other nice thing well, about this game. Well, here's the thing, though. Like, what you missed was the game. Him saying, "He's like, I didn't think it was going to be that easy, was it?" <laughs> it's like, oh, well played. That's how the game starts off. Very like, all right, all right. Yeah. Yep. You, you, you got you got to pay attention. You got to read through all the all the lore and whatnot. And they give you they give you a good amount of lore. And you 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 walk around and you interrogate people, and occasionally you dive into their brains. And then at that point, it just turns into more layers of fear. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's 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 for me, it's like a well done example of this sort of game. But it it's a, it's a hard sell for me. Like you got to do something really really crazy for me to get on board with this. I I, I, I don't I don't know. It's just random spoopy shit. Um, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, uh, okay. And the speaking of random spoopy shit, uh, this game does have a few jump scares, but they feel very much organic. Uh, we mentioned the um, the janitor doorman person who kind of sneaks up on you while you're in his office going through his uh, his personal computer, and that genuinely because i was starting to turn around and i see something there and he kind of makes weird gesture with his arms like oh crap that was a genuine jump scare and it didn't feel forced at all it felt it wasn't forced i don't think it yeah. was like uh it wasn't a jump scare it was intentionally there to make you go oh fuck but it wasn't yeah. booga booga it was a yeah. uh, and natural organic jump scare and that is good I, that I, I yeah a, a hundred percent i feel this game should a hundred percent be commended on the fact that it does not rely on jump scare too many yeah. people conflate startling with scary and that's mm. just not true thanks slender yeah, man you gave, you gave us about five years or four years <laughs> of every it's like oh let's make based on that because that got real popular uh, yeah doom yeah. three was very uh jump scary uh, jump scare reliant I think once you figure out how the game works, for me, the puzzles so far, pretty easy. Nothing like really stumped me. A couple of things made me think, but I think that was what I like to call unintentional puzzles because I couldn't figure out mm -hmm. what the game was trying to tell me to do because it does not lead you around by your dick, Oregon. Nope. It, mm -hmm. I mean, this they thing. They basically drop you in a room and say, here's a sandbox. Have fun. <laughs> Pretty much every now and then it might tug on your nipples every now and then, but that, that's mm -hmm. about it. And sometimes it's just trying to figure out what you need to interact with. And one thing about these games, they're getting closer, but you're trying to go for, at least they didn't do the hand this time. You listen to me. <laughs> they didn't do the hand, they did the square. <laughs> Layers of fear. You show me the hand, that means you're trying to walk into frictional territory. Frictional. Oh, uh, speaking of uh, frictional, um, there's a, an interesting comparison that I found to be made between this game and Soma. They're like uh, symmetrical opposites of one another. Because while frictional, you had Amnesia, The Dark Descent, and the Penumbra series, Soma wasn't really as good as those. But when it comes, uh, they uh, Soma took elements from those games and made like a sci-fi thriller story. This game is the symmetrical opposite in the sense that Layers of Fear wasn't particularly good, but they took elements from that game and they made a better one. Observer is 
a better game than Layers of Fear. It's uh, it's actually something I didn't hate, which it, it, it's kind of insane when you think about it, and at the same time not, because it's developers that actually took the criticism that people gave them about their previous game, and they fixed those criticisms they address those criticisms and they fix the game rather than you know throwing a hissy fit and standing well, they their took ground, the shit like, to the next level everything's upgraded this is a oh yeah better story Absolutely. better game um at the end of the day i think visually it's fucking stunning unreal engine is really showing its strength visually um what did we end up with i think with three, three for Pedro, two for Jordan, three for me. Yeah. So yeah, you're gonna get two for that. And we t- we tally all that nonsense up, and totally we get two chairs That's for right. up the server. <laughs> the, it passes. Look, 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 look. It passes. Yeah, it, it passed. Uh, and and I mean, like this, again, like for for me in the fun category, like this sort of game is really a hard sell. So I, it it's well done. It's competent. I'll give it that. Um, but it's not fun for me. Yeah, I mean, each to their own. I mean, I feel the same way when I watch you play Darkest Dungeon. I'm like, oh, the fuck <laughs> ever. Um, here's what I'm going to say. This is my tax of brass on this. On Observer, what I was able to play and how I had to play it negatively impacted things. Despite that, I thought it was fun. I think it's a little bit contrived, but so far in my three hours, reasonably well-told story. But wait I... until the bugs are sorted out. And yeah, also, I Pedro, genuinely... fuck off for a minute. I'm talking. Okay. <laughs> sort the performance. Fix that shit. It's bad. I know Unreal Engine 4 runs better than this because I think, Pedro, you can attest... You've seen it as well. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, the game runs like ass. Even with uh, the Ryzen 5 1600 and the uh, GTX 1080, the game runs like complete ass. Uh, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think any of us have like really slouchy systems either. So yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, so not, the, they, it's not the hardware. Really, that really needs to be addressed. That said, though, the game itself... Uh, outside of the technical issues kudos bloober team you had it in you all along all you needed to do was actually get past some of the tropes and make the game you wanted to make and you did it you you fucking did it because sure it only got two chairs when it came down to it but this is a sizable improvement over layers of fears or layers of doors as that game, yeah, at, 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 at least eSports. at least in this, there are some gameplay elements to this, and it's really awesome when you actually hack into someone's mind and you go through the things. You really feel like, oh shit, I, I want to see what they okay. do next. So, I almost feel like they went a little too far with the mind hacking shit. Like it in some of the mind hacking, like especially when you first start doing it, it seemed like. Uh, it was just overdone. It was like, oh, look how trippy the, everything is. See, look, look, yeah, somebody's mind is super is trippy. Everything is overdone, but you kind of adjust to that. And at that point, you get really curious, like, well, how far did they push this? And you go and poke it. And it didn't disappoint. At least I want to play more of this game. I'm probably going to play all the way through it because I love horror games. I'm one of those did, people. Did you get all the way to the electronic snake monster? Yep. Okay. <laughs> That's about where I'm at right now. And I'm like, oh, wait, there's a run. And uh, then I was really, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, then I was pissed off because like, do you know how much time I could have saved? I didn't know there was run because it's not. Yeah, there's a sprint button. It's shift. Yeah, on, 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 the, on the controller, you got you to gotta hold down the, uh, uh, the analog stick. Yeah, you got to tap it. And it's kind of a weird mechanic to do it until you get used to it. Mm-hmm. But uh, uh, yeah, current price right now. What are we at? Uh, it's on sale, fifteen percent off, twenty five forty nine. Yep. You want to support him? I, I couldn't. If it's you like this kind of stuff, game. yeah, you're looking at it. And you're like, all right, in twenty five, maybe pick it up. Uh, Thirty bucks right now? No, uh, just because it's not uh, technically 
sound enough to justify that price. It's got too many. Wait, 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 wait until you can bump that mix with the working up to three chairs and then we'll talk. Right. Yeah. All right. right. So coming up next, we got a bunch of hate mail, including some Bangladeshi ramblings that, um, well, well, we'll jump off that bridge when we get to it. Well, you know what time it is. It's the end of the show. It's that time where I, besides, you know, spiking my microphone arm, we get to read what you sent our way. And it's only fair. I mean, we've only we've already spent an inordinate amount of time screaming in your direction. I guess we have to let you scream back at ours at some point, And this is it. This is my favorite time of the show. It's the hate mail. And you can uh, send some our way by going to LinuxGameCast.com. You hit the little contact button on the nav bar and you fill out the form. Make sure to pick LGC Weekly. Or if you'd like to ask Jordan some uh, relationship advice, you can also do that. Just make sure to um, understand Ven's CAPTCHA. Apparently this week we learned that we can't really multiply anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you, you know what they say. Three times three is 2017,000. Purple. <laughs> it's blue. Three times three is blue. All right. Coming up first this week is from Bass. Bas- Bas- he's from He's from Germany. He says hi. Um, so there's been a long time bug in Unity about full screening. When you launch the game, especially, especially if you're switching monitors, only cure so far is editing press by hand. So this screen could be a godsend. Uh, Unity scream of nope. Uh. See, if the Unity screen of nope actually worked, uh, they do have an option down at the bottom to pick which screen you want the game to use. It doesn't work half the time, and most games just outright ignore when you set it to a specific screen. I've had that happen to me multiple times when Unity games don't, uh, when Unity developers don't deliberately specify that. Well, I I mean, you can easily solve this problem by joining the uh, separate X screens master race. (laughs) But sometimes that's not feasible. Sometimes you're in a hotel and you're only, your secondary monitor is a TV that you have um, that you have plugged in that you can only access uh, by going to the right. Yes, that you can only well left. There, 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 well, left, right. There, 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 there's some troublesome things that the TV will also time out because it's that hotel subsystem that doesn't give you direct access to the HDMI. Mm-hmm. It gives you mm-hmm. that shitty little dongle thing uh, that you have to go through the TV menu. Anyways, um, yeah, I mean they. They really could have like made the Unity Scream of Nope actually have some useful information, including controller configuration and whatnot, but they don't. So now it just becomes this weird artifact that goes that makes you go, okay, so this person didn't put effort into their game. Got it. Yeah, I mean, even back in the day, you attempts were made to try to pretty it up, and yeah. you know, we'd seen that, and you, you could do the best with what you had. And we've seen uh, full-on art hardness with... Having the Unity Scream of Note, but then again, having all the options in game at the yep. same time. It just wasn't disabled. Separate X screens, I've never had a problem with it. My biggest issue with it is with your standard like PS4 X clone controller or something like that laying around. If you're playing in big picture mode, that means you got to break out a gerbil or a keyboard, man. Yeah. So, uh, although you nowadays you can also set on the. Uh... Use the touch bar on the DualShock 4 controller as the as the mouse. Yeah. Mm. That's, that's the solution. Yeah. So um, I guess up up, up next though, <laughs> we got we got some Bangladeshi insanity. He says, yeah, "My knife doesn't talk." Advice. Yeah, <laughs> sure. My knife doesn't talk to me anymore. I used I used her to carve chicken, mongoose, goat, and something that could taste like chicken but doesn't look like it. Anything I've seen before. Is it because I use her to do my bidding instead of showing her the respect she deserves? Also, why do random people approach to me to, to <laughs> their problems and or marriage proposals for their daughter or person even though I tell them, I don't know you. I hate you. Please stop talking to me. Do I need to be like Pedro? Help. Love Lord Banana Hammock, aka the Dockmeister, aka Orn. Well, I'm 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 gonna stop you right there because never ever ever go full Pedro. I mean, look at this guy. 
Like, just Hello. don't 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 do it. <laughs> don't do it. Uh, if you, and if your knife doesn't talk to you, like maybe maybe you need to. I don't know. You got to grease the wheels with some blood, be it cow blood or human blood or something well, like that. Well, you tried blood, apparently. Yeah, uh, the blood is the life, man. Elves and blood. Of course, it gets shit done. <laughs> good, old, good old elf blood. Make with the elf blood. And, uh, yeah, and, uh, you know, if people are coming up to you and proposing marriage for their daughter person, um, run. No, no, not or, really. I, I mean, you might as well throw something out or, there because, in fact, that they've or, or, made or, or, a or, such or. a uh, chain of fucking bad decisions to get to the point of asking you <laughs> that. Um, yeah. Well, you, I mean, is is polygamy illegal in Bangladesh? Can you like assemble an army of wives and have them go do your bidding? Is yes. that a thing that can happen? <laughs> I'd rather have an army of husbands. You could probably inflict more damage. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, well the, the wives get the stealth bonus, and I, 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 I don't know. The moral of the story, though, is don't be like Pedro. Up next! Yeah, that's fair enough. Well, up next we have Eric, which, uh, well, he's talking about some open source money, and he says, glad you finally take it. If you take Litecoin or any other more efficient currencies, I will throw more at your heads. I mean, <sighs> I'm all for some damage being done to my head from <clears throat> just some cryptocurrency landing on it well he may or may not have sent us um to mbtc which depending on what minute it fucking is is somewhere <laughs> between like nine dollars and ten dollars or something like that i did check that <clears throat> and it says it has a low fee on it and i typically don't do the child pays for parrot type stuff because if we got to spend money to get money kind of factor that in to uh the transaction if you could that'd mm -hmm. be awesome uh we we might do what is it ethereum but the Ether uh, reason ethereum. we do bitcoin because we're not collecting or hoarding bitcoin there's this place called purse.io from san francisco that i can straight show up and go okay we need this for the show give them some bitcoin they work directly through amazon boom shit shows up that's all yep. there is to it it's not like frank's bitcoin traderama shack nine thousand. So it's really, really, I love Frank, <laughs> man. Frank's been running. That. Listen, I love Frank too. Motherfucker's a little sketchy. All right. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and say that. I mean, he's, he's standing right next to you, Ven. What the hell? He, he's got a, he's yeah. got a heart of gold and a sign of orange, but he, he can be a little sketchy, man. <laughs> did, did he, did he pay for that heart of gold with Bitcoin? <laughs> he he might have skimmed a little, a little bit off, man. I'm just I saying, you gotta watch enough. him. Uh, what is it? The fifteen percent expected uh, skimming? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of brilliant. But one thing I do know is everyone's beautiful. Thank you for supporting this business, making us, making us. Yeah, kind of making us do this trade direct for you. And yep. uh, we're gonna dive into the after shows and play some video games, hang out with some people, and do that business. So. Let's cue the music for the 271th time that I'll finally add in there. 14 days, man. Trust me. It's coming. Um, you can always find me at Vin Stone on Twitter, Vin Stone, Google, plus all that fun business. Send me a message. I'll at least read it. Uh, pro tip with the Twitter, though. Pro tip with the Twitter. If you want to have a conversation send me a dm or something like that because i'm not having a fucking conversation 121 goddamn characters at a time all right lgc cares l listen listen baby i swear I, I i won't go using that other no oh, well, anyways you can find me at the burning fool on twitter plus jordan swung on google plus talking to knives apparently because He's definitely can listen to this man i mean <laughs> Yeah, the, 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 I mean, you don't want to listen to the Swiffer button tester. <laughs> I, That's all I have. This was the closest thing I had at hand. It's a uh, freaking uh, heat lotion syringe. <laughs> Eat it. Yeah. <laughs> Chug. <laughs> Yummy. Uh, no, I am Peter Mathews. You can find me at an accounted for on Twitter or plus Peter Mathews on Google Plus. Hopefully not chewing on heat lotion, thermal paste, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. I just, Five I just, minutes I, later. I, I want to read that homicide report. <laughs> uh, homicide or suicide? Yes. <laughs> side. It's just a side report. 
We didn't learn anything. Fuck it. Let's just roll the credits. I learned how to Seriously. hack people's brains with Rutger Hauer powers. It's the Rutger Hauer Power Hour. If you're coming to Linux Gamecast Weekly expecting to learn something, something has gone wrong with your life at some know. point. I don't know. You want to see my patrons? <laughs> that, that's, my that's nasty. You're a pervert. <laughs> No, <laughs> oh, show me your beak! Sweet mother of God, show me your dick! <laughs> that nasty, you're perfect! Man, cartoons on the internet are weird. <laughs> oh, man. Ah. Those, well, all no, I know no. is there's a bunch of lovely people throwing us an inordinate amount of cash. <laughs> The, the one thing I did take away from that video, though, is if I ever hear, like, a bird come up next to me, like, Oh, see my pecker! I get the fuck out of there. <laughs> you run. Run, motherfucker. The, the, I, I start immediately scanning for unisharks. No, well, that, that's the thing. When, 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 once he shows you his dick, then it's too late. Then you're in the other world that has the unisharks. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it'll, it'll also stop your head from exploding. Yeah, just get, just get out of there. Five dudes. <laughs> <laughs>